Hi everybody, my name is Sarah Jo. This week, I'm co-hosting music lessons with Carlos. See you! Welcome everybody to another live session in music lesson webinar with Carlos. Today we will cover different topics, such as ear training, music theory, keyboard skills, chord progressions, and contemporary voicings. We also have some new piano tutorials, so stay tuned and let's get started. Hello everyone, I'm Sarah Jo. Today I'm going to play Autumn Lips. I wrote voice leading, Rosal Ferrante kind of style. After I studied and practiced his material, I happened to create these charts. So I tried to play all 12 keys. So I hope you like it. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Sarah Jo, for sharing with us your latest production. And um, <clears throat> I think a few weeks ago, we did a, a Sarah Jo recorded some of her early homework when she was studying with Russell Ferrante. And then many years later, you know, she's been working with those voice leading exercises. And then uh, she decided to apply the same exercises, but to different jazz standards. And she started with the chord progression of autumn leaves. So she did that voice leading sequence and she did it in all 12 keys. So we're going to explore because voice leading is a wonderful area for exploration. Later on, I'm going to replay just that E minor, a, a autumn leaves in E minor, but eventually we should do it in all 12 keys. Yeah. So <clears throat> excellent. So now we're going to start with our own material and I would like to start again with chromatic scales. Every single week chromatic scales is a warm-up. <clears throat> I cannot do the same with many of my students. So now so here we are chromatic scales in A flat and again I always like my chromatic scales because just in one pass ascending and descending we cover all the not only the solfage um, syllable possibilities, but also eventually the relationship, the harmonic relationship with a uh, chord scale harmony. <clears throat> I'm going to play really in any octave, you know, just to match the current video window. So here we go. We're going to start. Do, di, re, re, mi, fa, fi, so. Descending. Do, ti, te, la, le, so, se, fa, mi, me, re, ra, do. Okay, very good. So that was a foundation level. In foundation level, we are into developing the musical memory, establishing uh, the <coughs> the auditory kinesthetic visual memories yeah musical memories now we're gonna go to application in application uh, we're gonna activate those memories okay so we are going to sing 
the scale up and down and we're just going to touch the keys but we're not going to play them yeah so you can do that with the bass or the guitar too so here we go do di re ri mi fa fi sol si la li ti do. descending do ti te la le sol se fa mi me re ra do okay very important very important to do this practice and now we're gonna do the same but we're gonna work in bass clef so bass clef in treble clef i was using <coughs> my a flat as a pedal now we're gonna use in A flat major triad as a pedal while we play the bass line. So, foundational level first. We're gonna play and sing at the same time. Do, di, re, re, mi, fa, fi, sol, si, la, li, ti, do. Descending. Do, ti, te, la, Okay, so now we're gonna go to the next level. We're gonna play our major triad with our right hand and we're gonna touch the keys on the keyboard. Yeah, but we're not gonna play, we're gonna sing only. So here we go. Do, di, re, re, mi, fa, fi, sol, si, la, li, ti, do. Descending. Do, ti, te, la, le, sol, se, fa, mi, me, re, ra, do. And that's it for our warm-ups with scales. <clears throat> I want to move on and I want to do some warm-ups with, with intervals. Intervals and why intervals? Okay, we already have done major seconds. Major seconds and I would like to do... I would like to work with augmented fourths. Yeah, and here we have cycle of fifths, but we're going to be changing cycles. Why intervals is important? Because we're going to use intervals is... Um, one moment. Can you hear audio? Testing, testing. I, I have my audio here set up. Hi, Lucero. Thank you for your feedback. I'm just checking here my... Audio setup, and so far from this end, I'm sending audio live. Okay, but always thank you for for your for your feedback. Okay, <clears throat> so now um, we're gonna continue with augmented fourths, and augmented fourths is necessary. Yeah, because we're going to be using the visual images of intervals to be able to build all our voicings. Yeah, and that's going to entail intervals from a minor second to a major thirteenth, both ascending and descending in all 12 keys. Yeah, so... <clears throat> So if, if, um, let's say, I mean, I'm going to be asking you, okay, we're in the key of G, or at least G as a bass note. And then I'm going to ask you, okay, let's build some interesting voicing, yeah? And we're going to have, what are we going to have? We're going to have a 13, flat 7, flat 9, 3, sharp 11. We're going to have a sharp 9 and maybe a root on top, yeah? Kind of Duke Ellington sounding chord. 
yeah so anyways yeah and how is it that we can just build all those chords with ease is because we have developed our perception of intervals and it's not difficult to do yeah not difficult to do so my take after i don't know practicing piano since i was four years old and teaching for the last 30 years so I've, I've realized that uh, the best way to learn, especially contemporary piano, why contemporary piano? Because a contemporary pianist is a little bit like a piano player and composer at the same time. The pianist composer of all times or guitar player or bass player composer. Yeah, so you're going to be uh, not just working reading and you're, you're um, developing a sight reading, but you have to know your harmony, your chords, your improvisation. You have to know so many things and so many things that are even not written down. Down, but you have to figure them out on the spot so it's a little bit like a different skill yeah different like a different skill <clears throat> okay so here we go and um, we're gonna start augmented fourths and we're gonna go through cycle of fifth so augmented fourths three whole steps one two and three three whole steps and here we go, we're gonna build them. C, G, D, A, E, B, G flat, D flat, A flat, E flat, B flat, F C Okay, good. So now we're going to move on <clears throat> and we're going to do augmented fourths descending. So the same thing. One, two, three whole steps. And let's change cycles. Uh, which cycle should we do? Which cycle should we do? Why don't we do the cycle? Cycle of major thirds. And so cycles. It's nothing but a way to navigate through all 12 keys. So, so we always read them clockwise. That's it. Very simple. Yeah. It is, it's a different pathway yeah, to go through all 12 keys. So we are not just stuck on cycle of fourths for the next 20 years. Yeah. But we're a, we, we are exploring yeah, how to go from a key to a key center, from a chord to a chord, from, from one root to another root yeah, in all different ways. So let's start. Let's build augmented fourth descending. And here we go. C. E, A flat, I'm changing hands and I'm changing registers all the time, D flat, F, A, D, G flat, B flat, E flat, G, B and C. <clears throat> okay, good. So now we did our interval work. Interval work is going to be so important and it's going to be coming up later on. Later on, how about right now? Yeah, when we start with our chords. See, everything is now intervals. We have a flat 9, sharp 9, 3, flat 13, and also solfege, yeah, that we can relate to our to our chromatic solfege. Te, flat 7, Re, which is a sharp 9, Mi, 3, and Le, flat 13. And here is our chord. It's a dominant chord with a flat 13 and a sharp 9. But we're going to be working in 13 version. If you see the top row, 13 version. So how does it work? So let's say I'm in the key of C. I'm going to play a dominant 7 and 13 version. Now, my 5 is moving to the flat 3. My root is moving to the sharp 9. And I end up with this chord. There are some rules of tension substitution, yeah? It's part of chord scale harmony. And of course, we're not going to have time to go through them at this moment, but eventually we will, yeah? And that's going to be fun. Because once you know the tension substitution possibilities, where can the root go? Where can the third go? Where can the fifth 
yeah, or uh, go, you know, uh, in uh, relationship to other places which are not core tones. And based on that, you can create all your tension substitution voicings. So it's a, it's a big part of our voicing development. So now, we're gonna build <coughs> our, we're gonna build here our voicing. And we're gonna sing every note. Terry. And let's go through cycle of fourths. Easy. Everybody knows cycle of fourths. F. Next chord. Te, te, ri, mi, le. B flat. Te, ri, mi, le. E flat. A flat. T, re, mi, le. D flat. T, re, mi, le. F sharp. Okay, so now that was um, building our chords in all 12 keys, yeah, and we're building them. We can build them top down, we can build them a bottom up or top down, where we also we can build them using different patterns. Yeah, and actually we probably should explore that. Yeah, that's something I explore with my private students a lot. So something else that we should do is after building the chord is we should just play it, yeah, without building it, just straight. Yeah, so why don't we do that? And we were using cycle of fourths, so we still are going to use the cycle of fourths. So here we go. F, and uh, no, I'm sorry. Let's start with C. C. F. B flat. E flat. A flat. D flat. G flat. B. E A D G and back to C and that's it that was a nice workout yeah on our dominant 7 flat 13 flat 9 voicing okay <clears throat> so now I would like to go and I would like to play again Sarah Joe's voice leading video. And I want to talk about uh, here what Sarah Joe is going to do. So this chord progression is a chord progression of autumn leaves in the key of E minor. Uh, so we have E minor, so we have our A minor 7, you know, if you are just working with regular jazz voicings. <laughs> There would be one way, yeah, of voicing. But what Sarah Joe did is very unique. 
she t she took that chord progression and then she worked out with some voice leading technique if you see the soprano we have only four voices so you see the soprano and then you see the third voice the tenor now we have soprano alto tenor bass yeah. <clears throat> and then she worked with those uh, uh, creating cre uh, creating movement of voices actually this is a very powerful way of working with all our chord progressions and why not instead of using you know a traditional chord progressions that people used three four hundred years ago we should use actually all the contemporary all all our jazz standard chord progressions and we should apply this type of uh, technique to it so why don't we listen yeah and and let's also play along. Here we go. Okay, I would like to go through this piece, yeah, and okay, this is the next key, yeah, but we're not going to go through the next key. I had some questions myself, yeah, and I'm going to ask Sarah Jo, Sarah, I think you are doing attention substitution voicing on the third measure, third beat, yeah, because on the letter C, if I'm going to start, then we have a... the third beat and then we have that to me to me to me that sounds like an E flat 7 there would be a tension substitution chord maybe maybe but we also could see it as an A isn't it we have a flat 5 flat 9 the D flat would be the 3 and the and the B flat would be the flat 9 yeah yeah maybe maybe I'm wrong maybe I'm wrong <laughs> Okay, and then we have a G7. I think Sarah Joe also. Okay, so if we have the yeah the D flat, well, I'm here on the fourth fourth uh, measure third beat G7. So the, the G7 third beat. So that D flat would be a flat five the B the three. Then we have an uh, E flat which is the flat thirteen, and we have the A flat which is the flat nine. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, actually, personally, that's something I haven't explored too much. Yeah, to create that type of voice leading on a, on a, a, on a chord progression. Yeah, like autumn leaves or different jazz chord progressions. I think this is a fabulous workout. Yeah, I'm going to be studying it myself. So I want to play it again so we all can play it. I'm going to be playing together. Yeah, I have to do my homework too. I try to play every little moment. I remember when I was studying at the New England Conservatory and I was talking with my teacher, Rand Blake. He said, me, Carlos, sometimes I just have a few minutes here and there to be able to practice because I'm so busy teaching and doing classes and doing this and that. And, uh, and now it seems like I'm in the same situation. Yeah, so I have to use every single moment that I have in order to practice, yeah, to get, get my, as my teacher said, my chops, chops back, my technique, yeah. Uh, you know, get it up there always. So let's practice together. Here we go.
Okay, great workout. I was practicing. I was playing myself. Yeah, along. I was playing along. So, good. So now I have some... Um, I have some... Uh, <clears throat> I want to do ear training, yeah, because I have a few things I want to do in Latin piano. I do want to do merengue and salsa piano, but we have time. And we have plenty of time. So let's go and let's do some ear training because we were, we were doing some very interesting work together last week. Ear training. And what are we going to do with ear training? We're going to start with our single notes. Oops. Single notes. Okay, here we go. Single notes. And again, just a basic theory in uh, 10 seconds. I'm going to be playing major triads to establish a seeming key center, a seeming major key center. And you're going to be singing every one of those notes in those keys. Prerequisite for this is to be able to build yeah, your major scales with solfege in different keys. A, G flat, D. Even if you cannot do them that fast, but you can do Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. Okay, D, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. If you can do that, then you can work with me, yeah, on those practices. If you need review on building your major scales, I have like a lot of videos, both in YouTube and Facebook. Yeah, so uh, please go and check and just practice so you can get all your, your major cluster techniques up to uh, speed and then we all can have fun with those exercises. So, but we're gonna start. Let's start in the key of B. We're gonna sing Do. Do. Next one, let's move to any key as random. E flat. Let's sing me. Me. Check. Let's go to A flat. We're going to sing Sol. Sol. And let's go to another key. Which key should we go? Key of D flat. Let's sing T. Now well, we're singing T. We're just moving one by one. T always checking and let's go to where should we go key of a I'm gonna go and sing re re and let's go to G flat I'm gonna sing fa fa whoops seems to be the same note but in relationship to a different key and let's sing let's go to the key of E and we're gonna sing la La. <clears throat> okay, now let's go to. There are four things that I like to do in my ear training system. Number one is single notes. Second, melodic patterns. Those are uh, eight patterns, eight melodic patterns, little uh, note permutation. Yeah, that actually cover a lot of territory. The other one are diatonic triads. And we're going to sing our diatonic triads also in different ways. And the other one, diatonic intervals. So everything is diatonic in relationship to a scale, yeah, in a key relationship. Yeah, so you already can see the chord scale harmony, jazz harmony or chord scale harmony, as they call it right, uh, uh, these days, yeah, in the background. Okay, so now we're going to move on to melodic patterns. Last week, we did D, uh, Re. So... Again, I explain the system in 10 seconds. We have eight patterns. Pattern number one through four. Yeah, we have a diatonic, uh, all the melodies move by diatonic seconds. Patterns five through eight, all the melodies move by diatonic thirds. And we're gonna do those eight patterns on all the diatonic degree. So we're going to do eight patterns on Do, eight on Re, on Mi, on Fa, on Sol, on La, on T. And right, and we're shifting keys all the time, all the time. And then after we are done with major, we're going to do minor, we're going to do Aeolian, we're going to do melodic, we're going to do harmonic. Yeah, we're going to do all the different harmonic and melodic and major modes. Yeah, also we can even do a hybrid scale combinations. We even could do this on the symmetrical scales. So this workout can take us 10 years or more. Yeah, so it's wonderful. Yeah, because I like to be practicing all the time. Okay, <clears throat> so here, let's start. I'm going to play a triad. And now we're going to sing. 
the first pattern, Mi, Fa, Sol, Fa, Mi. Mi, Fa, Sol, Fa, Mi. Okay, time to talk about the technique. Again, we have two levels, foundational level, application. Foundational level has to do with creating musical memories. Application, activating those memories. Yeah, so because of the nature of this webinar, I'm gonna stay in foundational level, which is I'm gonna be playing and singing at the same time. How would you practice the more application level? Application level, you just would play. Mi, fa, sol, fa, mi, and then you may check. Yeah, so you're actually uh, only using your musical memory for, for those exercises, yeah? But here in this class, we're gonna just play and sing at the same time. It's gonna be better for the webinar uh, format. Okay, let's start again. I got distracted by myself. Okay, let's start. Mi, fa, sol, fa, mi. Lesson number two, mi, re, do, re, mi. Different key, at random. Mi, re, do, re, mi. Number three, mi, fa, mi, re, mi. Let's go to the key of E. Mi, fa, mi, re, mi. And let's go to number four, mi, re, mi, fa, mi. And which key are we going to do? A flat. Mi, re, mi, fa. We're gonna go to the next four, which are movement by diatonic thirds. So let's go to number five, mi sol ti sol mi. Let's go to a key of D. Mi sol ti sol mi. And let's move on to number six. Number six, key of. Let's go to key of A. Mi do la do mi. Mi do la do. And let's move on. Let's go to F. Let's go to number seven. Mi sol mi do mi. Mi sol mi do mi. And let's move on to number eight. And let's go to the key of B flat. I'm gonna do mi do mi sol mi. Mi do mi sol mi. Okay, I hope you enjoyed our melodic patterns workout, but now I want to continue. I want to do diatonic triads. So again, those diatonic triads, just the sequence is going to change. I have actually five sequence paths, and it doesn't matter. What it matters is actually we work on those triads. Yeah? So we're going to do our one, three minor, five major, seven diminished, two minor, four major, and six minor. <coughs> okay, for those students who are studying traditional harmony, you see that, Carlos, you are putting everything in caps. I thought that only major scale, major triads have, were in caps and all the other ones were in lowercase. Well, you're correct. According to traditional harmony, you're correct. Nevertheless, in chord scale harmony, everything is written in upper caps. Why would that be? It's because of the chromatic nature. Yeah, of the chromatic nature of the of, of of that harmonic system. You know, when was it born? What type of music it applies? Yeah. In traditional music, let's say we're here in the key of C, and we have some sort of a dominant seven going to the five, or resolving to the five. We had oh, different names like the French augmented, Swiss augmented, you know, in all those in all those names. Yeah. So it is it, that system, the uh, four-part traditional system, we can say that it is a system that, it, you know, is a, has a, still a strong major and minor pol polarity. Yeah, and the chromaticism goes to up to a certain level. Yeah, yeah in, in chord scale harmony, we start from the very beginning with a very chromatic system. Yeah, so because of that, to use lowercase on minor um a try and on minor diatonic triads, it, it, it would make sense. Okay, that's just my take. Yeah, I know some other uh, jazz musicians or uh, contemporary theory teachers will have a different take, but that's my take. Okay, so let's do it. Gonna sing. 
Now, uh, let's sing uh, one major. Do, mi, sol, mi, do. At the very end, we're gonna play the triad. Now we're gonna move to another key at random. Let's go to key of C. Mi, sol, ti, sol, mi. See, the technique is different. At the very last note, you play the triad. Yeah, so that your mind is boop, connecting everything. Let's go to another one. How about key of E flat? I'm gonna do a uh, five major. Sol, ti, re, ti, sol. And let's move on. Let's go to D. Let's go to the key of D. And we're gonna sing seven diminished. Ti, re, fa, re, ti. At the very end, I play the triad. Yeah, so the whole perception kind of merges together. Okay, and let's go to two minor. Which key should we do? How about B flat? Two minor in the key of B flat. Re, fa, la, fa, re. And let's move to four major. Four major. And Alfie Lucero, I'm glad that you're uh, getting audio. Yeah, and thank you for letting me know because sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I don't turn my audio on and I just continue with my, with my lecture. Okay, <clears throat> let's go to four major. Let's go to the key of B. We're gonna sing four major. Fa, la, do, la, fa. At the very end, you play the, tri the triad. Okay, and let's go to the last one, six minor. Which key should we go? How about E flat? And six minor. La, do, mi, do, la. There we have six minor. So that's our diatonic triad workout. And we're gonna do many, many workouts with this one. Yeah, many uh, applications. And now, oh boy. Diatonic sixth, and this one is very tricky. Okay, last week, I think we did diatonic fifth, ascending and descending, and that was tricky too, but this is, this is more difficult. I think it's even more difficult than diatonic seventh. So I'm gonna again play a triad, and you're gonna sing any of those diatonic intervals, ascending in the second line, descending. So here we go. Do, la, ascending. Do, la. Let's go to another key. How about G? I'm gonna sing the second, second one. Re, T. Re, T. Let's go to another key. B flat. Now we're gonna sing Mi, Do ascending. Mi. And let's move on to another key. How about D flat? And we're gonna sing Fa Re ascending. Fa Re. And let's move on. Let's go to the key of E. Let's sing Sol Mi ascending. Sol Mi together. Moving, let's go to A flat. In A flat, and we're gonna sing La Fa ascending. La Fa. And moving on, let's go to the key of E flat. And we're gonna sing T Sol. T Sol. Okay, this probably we're not gonna master this in a week. Yeah, you know when I work with my students both at uh, college or privately, yeah, this takes us a while. But you already can see that all this system is geared in to be able to hear and play, hear and play. Yeah, so it has an incredible 
practical goal in the background. Yeah? So now we're going to do the second row. Yeah, we're going to do a diatonic six descending. So let's start F. Do first row, a eh, first box, do me descending. Again, do me and moving. Let's move to another key. How about key of A? Now we're gonna sing Re Fa descending. Re Fa. Let's move to D flat. We're gonna sing Mi Sol descending. Mi Sol. And let's move to, where should we go? E flat. We're gonna sing Fa, La, descending. Fa, La. And let's move on to the key of B. I'm gonna sing Sol T, descending. Sol, T, and in the key of G, we're gonna sing La, Do descending, La, Do, and moving on, let's go to B flat, we're gonna sing the last one, T, Re descending, T, Re, okay, we did it. We have done diatonic seconds, thirds, fourths, fifths, and today diatonic sixth. Next week, diatonic sevenths. Yeah, we can finish, and then we're gonna we're gonna redo, we're gonna review because we need to review. Yeah, this is this is not gonna be done in a week. Okay, so now let's get some Latin piano. Yeah, let's let's work on some. Uh, Okay, I want to work on this pattern. Derecho style. This is a, a, the next, a, a, another example of my book. Okay, derecho style, which means straight. Sometimes they call it marcha or march. Yeah, uh, because the, uh, just the dynamic of the tambora against the conga uh, pattern. Okay, so why don't we listen? 248 beats per minute. Let's see if we also can play along. Okay, so side reading, side reading this pattern might be a little bit tricky. Yeah, so we're gonna take it apart. So number one, we're in the key of C, C minor, one, four, five, one. Nevertheless, a harmonic rhythm, we have a four to the one and then to the five. Yeah, and that's a very interesting harmonic rhythm that kind of has a forward motion to it. Yeah, if we go back to, um, let's say in, in traditional uh, music, we have a four, five, one. See, we um, we sit on the one, yeah? The G kind of brings us to the one, but we don't want this. We want to be uh, looping, yeah? We want to be grooving and we want to continuing dancing. Yeah, so we want the harmonic rhythm to support us in a kind of psychological forward motion, yeah? feeling forward motion. So that's why we have a four, one, five. Okay, that's a one thing to pay attention to. The other thing is that uh, 
we have this pattern in tens. Yeah, so when I have the C on the right hand A flat, then same thing with C. Then same with uh, G, the five. We go chromatically and then we go back. Let's practice. Yeah, let's 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 practice this pattern. Yeah, once one moment. Let me bring pattern to the beginning. And here we go. Okay, so now we're going to go uh, slow down. We're going to go to 180 beats per minute so we can practice, uh, you know, uh, with more precision. And here we go. One, two, one, two. Okay, so now it's time for us to practice without the piano. Yeah, so we're only going to see the bass and percussion parts. Yeah, so here we go. Okay, so now it's time to take it to 248 beats per minute. Yeah, 248 beats per minute, but without the piano, just bass and percussion. One, two, one, two. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the merengue piano tutorial of the week. And now we're gonna go to salsa. Yeah, salsa piano. Why am I choosing merengue to salsa? I don't know. Maybe I'm doing a recapitulation of my life because when I was in Boston and I was playing every night. Yeah, that's what I used to do. I, I, I did all my uh, sets, merengue, salsa, merengue, salsa. Yeah, and um, I, wanna bring, I wanna bring that up. So here we go. Let's work with our salsa tutorial. Hi everybody, today we're going to play a 1571 Montuno pattern in 2 3 clave. The Montuno pattern is four measures long. We're going to play it four times and then we're going to move to another key. We're going to go through all 12 keys using the cycle of fourths. 
Why don't we start? One, two, one, two, one, two, three, four. Okay, hope that you enjoyed this salsa workout in all 12 keys. 
Yeah, uh, very good. You know, this this is actually something that we should do. Yeah, just take some those Montunos and then work them out. Yeah, in different keys. In this uh, a key example, I took the cycle of fourths, but actually we also should explore the other cycles. Yeah, we have all different cycles, so we can be moving harmonically. Yeah, in all different ways. So great, and I will see everybody next week, next Saturday. <music>